Hey everybody, it's James. How you doing? We're getting back into the Band of Brothers with episode 7. We only have like three episodes left after this one. It's going by very quickly. And um, I'm anxious to see who makes it to the end of the journey. Uh, last episode, we were just getting the crap beat out of us. Um, and uh, they had to get resupplied and like <laughs> a bunch of stuff happened. And then at the end it said the hundredth never agreed that they needed to be resupplied or they needed more troops or anything. And there was guys like freezing to death. <laughs> they had frostbite and like all this stuff. Uh, last time we really followed the story of the the medics associated with the campaign. Um, and I like that they're like just separating out the, all these little people and jobs and like what they do and how they handle situations and all that. It was just a really good little breakdown. I am so enjoying the show and I'm thankful to my Patreon members for, you know, picking it for me to watch. Uh, but it's just one season and it's just a, you know, seven or 10 episodes. I guess I got to start asking people what to watch next. What's next on my agenda to start watching. Uh, so yeah, thanks to them. And thanks to all of you for subscribing and liking the channel, of course. And, uh, yeah, let's get into it. Let's watch Band of Brothers episode seven. My friends, my men being killed. And uh, this is, it doesn't take too many days of that. And you changed dramatically. He was hungry, we had no food, we didn't have much ammunition. It was cold, we didn't have any clothes. Okay, we're still in the campaign. We're still at this town. Take care of them as you might, and especially if you're in an attack, uh, moving or whatever. And uh, I withstood it well, but I had a lot of trouble. You need to trim your eyebrows, dude. <laughs> because uh, those events would come back, and and you never forget them. Yeah, they're sad. Yeah, it's tough to think about for them. Of course it is. Man, I hope that they got all these pictures to some professional photoshoppers, because they could clean these up and just make them fantastic. Uh, the real ones. These are obviously fake mocked up ones based on the actual show. But I'm sure they're based off of actual photos that people had. Oh, well, let's see what we're doing this episode. I'm excited. After holding the line at Bastogne, Easy Company was once again called on to help push the Germans back through the bulge. Well, we got the right attire on this time. Yes, sir. Which means we get right there. Hey, take it easy there. Stop crying, Malarker. I'll nail it to your head. Hey, you should. It's made of wood. He's made, he's made of wood. I was glad to be out of my foxhole and moving again. Yeah. Even if only to get warm. Keep your interval. Well, that guy's got a white helmet. What's that about? Not good in the snow. I mean, maybe probably better in the snow, actually, if, if, if he's down. The woods near the town of Foy, in preparation for what we all knew would be the eventual assault on Foy itself. Watch for mine. Yeah, if he was down in a hole with a white helmet, they wouldn't even know he was in there. Oh! Oh! oh, there he got him. Is it the gun he wanted? It's the gun he wanted. Hoobler had been talking about getting a Luger. Uh huh. Hell, Shifty, I think maybe I could have even given you a run for your money, right? No, no, I'm not a good shot. Now, Dad, he was an excellent shot. Excellent. I declare he'd shoot the wings off fly. I declare it. He must have figured nobody'd hear a horse. The uh, horses are loud when they're tr trotting. He lifted. Yeah. Thanks for the help. While he's helping him out, dig out. I mean, nice if you took Lieutenant Shane with him, too. Shut up, boy. Shutting up, Sarge. Oh. Yep. One man, maybe a sniper. That was no rifle. It was that stupid. It was this little gun. Did it go off? Oh, Jesus, it's who be shot. Sniper? No, no, he he shot himself. With his gun. Did it kill him? Oh, where are you hit? To my left. Oh, okay, hold on. I don't look. Oh, he's bleeding, all right. Yeah, put a tourniquet on it. Stay with us. <sighs> Take it easy. It's all right. Don't worry. Yeah, right. do? yeah, he hit a vein. He hit an artery. He hit a major artery. Don't they have safeties on those things? Bullet cut the main artery in his leg, sir. Yeah. Where's Dyke? 
You want to see him, sir? No. Where's Dyke? I probably heard that question a thousand times. I probably asked it a few times myself. Well, where is he? Moose Heiliger probably would have done a good job, but before we got a chance to find out, he was accidentally shot by a sentry. Then came Norman Dyke. And I want tight security around the company CP, Lieutenant James. That understood? Man, he's dehydrated. All right, I got to make a call. He needs to drink something. Sometimes we got the feeling E Company was an annoyance to him. Something unpleasant he had to get through before he could continue his march up the ladder. I'm telling you boys, we're screwed. If you ask me, I'm glad Lieutenant Dyke's never around. Hey, you know what? We're doing all right. Yeah, you are. You're doing great. Yeah, Don, we're doing all right. We're doing all right now. In case you ain't noticed, there's a little town down the hill over there, right? And in that town are these guys. And these guys are called Germans. <laughs> He's talking kind of funny. You got to do all this with a CEO who's got his head so far lump in his throat is his goddamn nose. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be a replacement officer coming in here and getting thrown in with a group of guys who've known each other for what, two years? No, that's true. They've been in combat together since Normandy. I supposed to just show up and lead them? How's the guy do that? Very good intuition on him. Very good thought process. If you ask me, a guy'd have to march off to Berlin and come back with Hitler's mustache or something. <laughs> <laughs> you guys don't worry about Dyke, all right? Yeah. If we all do our jobs, everything will be fine. What a way to pick up the morale of his men, right? It was company first sergeant, it was my job. Not to protect Dyke, but to protect the integrity of the company. Exactly, the morale. Vision's not gonna let me replace him just because I got a bad feeling about him. Even if they would, who'd I put in his place? Shams? Do not ever talk when I'm talking, you got me. Oh, jeez. I want Easy Company to have at least one experienced platoon leader. Not that it matters anyway, because I can't get rid of Dyke. What if you could? And you, Wild Bill. I've invested too much time shaping you into something useful. <laughs> I know, I know, you'll kill me. Even if you're dead, I'll still kill you. <laughs> Even if you're dead, I'll still kill you. Oh, what was it with the full metal jacket? Marines aren't allowed to die without permission? That cracked me up. Yeah, I know who Crazy Joe McCluskey is. What are you saying, he's nuts? Because Crazy Joe McCluskey was nuts, babe. That's why they called him Crazy Joe. <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm not saying he's nuts. I'm just saying... That's how we got the nickname. Oh, come on, you've seen him, Bill. He's, he's all wound up like a spring. Hey, 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 he's fine. I've been there, okay? He ain't pretty. Besides, you saw, once he was up moving around, he was his old self again. Yeah, just get him some action. I'm serious. Sure thing, Buck. Nothing stupid. We got it, right? We got it. Huh. Nothing stupid, Buck. They're so freezing. What happened if they were putting, like, tarps over the top of their holes to keep us uh, warm? I swam across the Niagara once. Yeah. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> swam across Niagara? I didn't go over the falls, George. I swam across the river. I don't know. Ten miles up from the falls. I tell you, that current is damn strong. Oh, yeah. Gee, I wonder why. I didn't think it was all that stupid, but, uh, my mom, my sister Ruth, <sighs> They gave me all kinds of hell. Yeah. Well, they had a point. You're an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> they had a point. Maybe he should be Crazy Joe. What's he working on there? Are you trying to keep it? Clean it? Does it have a safety on it? What kind of work did you do there? My brother and I helped my mom run a boarding house. Okay. And your father? He was, uh... He was killed when I was ten, sir. Oh. Automobile accident. Hmm. Said if you want to make it as a paratrooper, you had to be the best. And I wanted to fight with the best, sir. You wanted to be the best. You miss it? Miss what? Huntington. Honestly, sir, I uh, try not to think about it that much. Depressing. Where are you from, sir? And he's gone. And he's gone. He goes like that. Vision has decided to pluck one officer from each regiment that served in the heroic defense of Bastogne, sent it back to the States on a 30-day furlough. Oh! Turns out I've been plucked. How in the world does your leaving help me? It doesn't. I'm not going. I've already seen the States. I grew up there. That's why I came to Europe. Yeah, huh? Send Peck. Congratulations, Lieutenant Peacock. I can't think of anybody who deserves this more. <laughs> why Peacock? Yeah, Hell of a Hell of a guy. Thanks, guys. I mean, it really means a lot, you know? Oh, get out of here. <laughs> why are they sending him? They come by here, you all remember this file for the camera. Got to keep the morale up for them folks back home. Why? Damned if I know. <laughs> 
They've also got uh, at least 188, although we haven't been able to spot it yet. How about armor? As of last night, three tigers. Three tigers! What are you doing here? I want to head back to the line, sir. Joe, you don't have to do that. Get yourself back to the aid station. Heal up. I'd really like to head back with the fellas, sir. Oh. Okay. Injury or not. Just a reminder that I'm offering a seven-day free trial to new Patreons. That is where you can find all my full reactions and this exclusive content. We got hit in the arm. New Year's Eve gift from the Luftwaffe. Jesus. A lot of you guys been injured? It's called wounded, Peanut. Injured's when you fall out of a tree or something. Yeah, wounded. I leave God. A skinny little guy? He got pink to the neck in Holland. And right next to him, that other skinny little guy. That's Popeye. Popeye! One chunk in the face, another chunk almost took out his nuts. <laughs> ah, what those nuts like? Doing fine, Bill. <laughs> war stories. Lots of war stories. Lieutenant Ronald Spears was one of the platoon leaders in D Company. Mm -hmm. He was already a legend. Why? The stories about Spears are probably all anyway. What stories? Well, supposedly Spears shot one of his own men for being drunk. You're kidding. Oh. There's another one about him giving cigarettes to 20 German POWs. And then kill them all. He yeah. shot 20 POWs? Well, actually, I heard it was more like 30. It was probably more like eight. Keep up the good work. While you're at it, you might want to reinforce your cover. Oh, well, actually, sir, Lieutenant Dykes are not even to bother. They're only going to be here one day. Lieutenant Dykes said that, huh? I don't forget what I said. Carry on. Wow. He's chilly. Oh, looks like the crowds have been pounding this area with pretty big stuff. 88s. I'd say they got this whole stretch of the line targeted. Probably. Maybe they got a new target. No, they're just waiting. For what? For us to us, for, Yeah, for you. Here you go, Bill. Hey, thanks, Lip. You got it. I'll get you some more branches. I appreciate that. Yeah. So is this fortification putting some branches up? You're making a lot of noise. Uh-oh. Incoming! Take cover! Yep. Get down. Get in your hole. Oh no! You get hit? Nope. Jeez, a lot of it. Hey, you know what? Cover it up with a tree. That's great. Big freaking bombs. Big shells. What I saw that yeah, day was look the most at that, awesome and terrifying display of firepower I'd ever seen in my life. Of course, I wouldn't have been laughing if I'd known what happened. He liked it. Yeah. I didn't think he made it. He's full of shrapnel. You're done. Unless you get a belt around that really quick. Maybe we should see if anybody's hit. Uh, my law gets what they want. Crowds are trying to draw us out in the open. Right, and then they'll just keep doing it. Stay in your foxholes! Help! Help! Anyone there? Yeah, he's stuck inside. The tree covered him. I ain't gonna... I ain't gonna get up. Buddy, put a tourniquet on that thing if you want to live. Hey, get me out of here, They're fine. They're in the hole. You okay? Yeah. Come on. That seems like a safe place to hide. Get it on a cover for my foxhole. <laughs> Incoming! <laughs> you think I ever did it on the cover for my foxhole? That's funny. I would have stayed in there, man. They're both blown up. He was just trying to help him. You stay down! First Sergeant Empton, you get things organized here. I'm gonna go for help. Uh you gotta smoke. Jesus. What's the guy I gotta do to get killed around here? <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Get a tourniquet on that sucker. He's blown to hell. Buck was a great combat leader. He was wounded in Normandy and again in Holland. He received the Silver Star for his part in taking out those German guns on D Day. He took everything the crowds could throw at him time and again. UCLA did not make the Rose Bowl this winter, probably because you weren't there. I'm sure you're teaching all of your young soldiers the joy you have of the sport. Mmm. Letters from home. I guess he just couldn't take seeing his friends toying Garnier all torn up like that. Yeah, he needs, man, some, some help. 
Meeting, shrinks, times with other vets. Whatever, Lieutenant Dyke. We were stuck with Dyke. He's over there. And he was off taking a walk. Uh huh. What's he doing? He's got no helmet, no gear, no nothing. Ah, uh, First Sergeant Lipton, you organize things here, and I'm <laughs> gonna go for help. <laughs> <laughs> I need to go polish my oak leaf. Is he right there? I thought it was a little off. Nah, you got it pretty good. Huh? Second, don't do it anymore. Yeah, don't do it ever again. Right. Exactly. Oh, Jesus. That came out of nowhere. Jesus. Wow. Oh, my God. It hit their hole perfectly. Yeah, get out of there. Forget the... Get a, if your legs work, move your ass. That came out of nowhere. Oh no! Holy crap. They spent some money on pyrotechnics. And I were in was a dud. The one that hit Muck and Pinkala's foxhole wasn't. That's just the way it was. Muck and Pinkala were good men. And there's that's about all that's left of them. Bruce just been resupplied. We're in good shape. Okay, we'll just hunker down. We might get some relief soon. Uh huh. Okay? All right. Holy crap. Just came out of nowhere, man. Later that day, we were back in our old position overlooking Foy. We were all worried about Malarkey. Hey, Malark. Didn't I hear you say you wanted to uh, bring a Luger home for your kid brother? Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He's got one for you. Well, I took all the bullets out of it so you don't shoot yourself in the leg and kill yourself. Buck was never the same after seeing Toy and Garnier get hit that day. I'm sure. I guess he just needed some time away from it all. The barrages on January 3rd and the shelling on January 9th marked the low point in the war for many of the men in E Company. Oh, I'm sure. The night before the attack, I did something as first sergeant I would never have imagined myself doing. Was he going to try and take the job? Take over E Company? Didn't figure you for a smoking man. Neither did I. Look at that door frame. <laughs> Lieutenant Dyke is an empty uniform, Captain. He's not there, sir. Well, he's gonna be there tomorrow. Yes, sir, I understand he will be there physically, but tomorrow's gonna be the real deal. And he's gonna have to lead those men. He's gonna have to make decisions, sir, and I... He's not capable. We've got about an eighth of a mile of open field to cross before we get down here in a four. Right here, they'll give you covering fire. Third battalion... He's walking him through it. Covering fire! Let's go, keep it moving! Oh, those, those are machine guns on our side, okay. Keep oh. moving! Oh, jeez. Leave God! Where the hell is first platoon? Just go! Get me phony on the radio! Get out of there! Move! So I think we should take cover. Find some cover! Of course you should take cover! Jesus. First platoon, hold up, hold up! Take cover! Martin! Come on, soldier with me! With you, sir! <laughs> What the hell? Fall back! You guys are now they're falling back? He's a waste. He just had a whole bunch of people killed, and they're right back where they were. Ramirez, two guys, take them. Go! Find some cover behind this table. Oh goodness. He's gonna get they're all gonna get killed. Give me some cover! Give me some cover! Oh man, that lieutenant. We have to keep moving! Got to keep moving! Don't you go! Hang on, Perko! Oh, Jesus. What is a grenade launcher's on that building till it's gone? When it's gone, I want first to go straight in. Forget going around. Everybody Yay! Decisions being made! Sergeant Alley! Got it, Sarge! There we go! Boom! Come on, get in there. Get rid of that stupid other guy. Armor and infantry! A lot of infantry! Yeah, huh? Oh, back here. Is he right up there with them? The astounding thing was that after he hooked up with the iCompany, he came back. Oh! Shoot the guys with the big frickin' mortars or whatever. Yeah. Well, I guess they won! 
You uh, hopefully they didn't disable all those weapons. Oh. Yeah, they're not gone yet. Oh, nice shot. Wow. Mellet, Heron, Sawasco, and Ken Webb were killed by a sniper. There would have been more if it hadn't been for Shifty Powers. Was that Pike or whatever his name was? Get killed because his idiot just didn't know what the hell he was doing and didn't resign or couldn't go on his walks. True about Dyke? Yeah. Thank God for small mercies, huh? Uh, <laughs> they're happy about it. We spent our night in Rashamp in a convent. It was the first time we'd spent a night indoors in a month. Yeah, I bet that was nice. The mood of the men was relaxed. Mm. We were finally being relieved and would soon be in Mormalon. Of course, in the morning, we found out Mormalon would have to wait. Hitler had launched a counteroffensive in Alsace, and we were bound for the town of Hagenau to help hold the line. But at least for that night, we didn't know it yet. That night, we were okay. How peaceful this would have been for them. Trying to come up with a roster for the company to see who we had left. We'd come into Belgium with 121 men and officers plus 24 replacements. That's 145 total. We were going out with 63. Oh, ouch. You want to ask me, don't you? Ask, ask you what, me. sir? Yeah, you what? You want to know if they're true or not, the stories about them. They're not. I bet if you went back 2,000 years, you'd hear a couple of centurions standing around and yakking about how Tercius lopped off the heads of some Carthaginian prisoners. <laughs> it's all hearsay. I've been told there's always been one man they could count on. It was you. Let him into the Bois Jacques, held him together when they had the crap shell at him in the woods. Every day kept the spirits up, kept the men focused, gave him direction. You don't have any idea who I'm talking about, do you? Yeah, uh, it's you. Hell, it was you for a sergeant. Ever since Winters made battalion, you've been the leader of Easy Company? Absolutely. Winters put in for a battlefield commission and sink approved on your behalf. You should get the official nod in a few days. Yeah. Congratulations, Lieutenant. Hey, Lieutenant. Hey, what do you want? Yeah, thanks for crapping in our foxholes, you sh Hey, it's our pleasure. <laughs> there they go, easy company, right? Yeah, they call it easy company, but seems pretty tough to me. Let's see, do we get any extra info at the end? He on the wound and killed every man with bullets. Yeah, yeah, lots. I'm not sure anybody was that true. That one that's carried with him is the one seriously. Specter, easy men bonded so unusually close together. Yeah, I suppose you can do that. Traumatic events. That was a good one. Let's talk about it. Yeah, I I really did enjoy that episode. The bonding of the men is so apparent, um, especially in not just you know moments of uh, tragedy, but you know the moments they have to live through together. The just the the just the bombing of them and losses and yeah suffering together right and rewards together when they you know complete a task like taking a city and things like that so it goes both ways the, that one guy running right between all the germans it was insane they just looked at him like who who is that guy do we know him is that one of us and he's in the wrong outfit what's what's going on i mean literally like ran right by Surprised he didn't take a couple out while he was there, throw a grenade at him or something, you know? He just ran through all of them, and then he turned around and came right back. <laughs> Insanity. Insanity. Oh, I love the one line where the, the gigantic tree fell on top of the fox hole. <laughs> and he goes, do you think I went a little overboard with the cover on my fox hole? <laughs> that was a funny thing to say. Yeah, I mean, it's lighthearted, and that's what I love about it. It's something I would probably say <laughs> if I was in a put in situation like that. Yeah, you think I put a little too much cover on? <laughs> I can't get in or out without assistance, but, you know, <laughs> not a lot of bombs are going to get in here. <laughs> yeah, I so enjoy the show. So thank you so much to everyone who suggested it and voted on it in the poll. And, um, yeah. It's just, it's great. Thanks to everybody for watching and subscribing and liking. And never forget that you are awesome. Thanks for watching. Bye.